Okay, guys, we're going to talk about... Oh. You didn't say your hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> you have Miss Green. And Coach Groves. We're going to talk about ordering real numbers today. First off, let's get a quick reminder. Miss Green, what was a real number? A real number is anything that is an irrational number or a rational number. Basically anything that can be found on the number line? Pretty much. Okay, cool. So, our learning target today is... We'll be able to order real numbers by approximating their values. What does approximating mean? I'm a confused. Approximating is kind of like estimating and kind of making it a little shorter if it's a crazy long number or finding the uh, the about spot, oh, I would say. Oh, okay. Awesome. So make sure that is in your journal. If you have to, pause the video. Steps to compare. So yeah, steps to compare. First off, convert all your numbers into decimal form. The reason I say that is you want them all in the same form, and decimal is the easiest form to compare them in. So are you telling me that I can do fractions if that was easier for me? If you find fractions easier, you totally can do fractions, but make sure you do have them all in the same form. Okay. Two, separate your negatives from your positives. Three, compare one decimal place at a time. In saying that, I'm saying like 3.14 versus 3.145. Make sure you're comparing those same ones. So if I have 3.14 and I'm comparing it versus 3.12, I'm comparing this place value together. Because the threes are the same, the ones are the same, so you want to go over to the next place value. Okay. And then you're going to write them in the proper order with the original form. Don't write them in all the decimals. Don't write them in all the fractions. Keep the original form. And if you're like, oh my gosh, you're overwhelmed because this is a lot of steps, don't worry. We're going to walk you through a couple of examples. Yes, we will. And make sure you do write your steps down in your journal so that when you're going back later, you can refer back to it. So let's compare these. We've got negative 3 to 3.5. First off, step one, convert all to decimal form. Hey, Miss Green, are we done with that part? Well, it looks like it. Okay, cool. Separate your positives from your negatives. They're both one's positive, one's negative. So let's compare them. What do you think? Greater or less than? Is negative 3 greater, less than, or equal to 3.5? Well, it doesn't even matter what we're looking at. All we know is that this is negative, this is positive, so I know that negative is always going to be less than my positive. Very true. And remember, your less than, it always points to this one that's less than. Um, you you want the bigger piece of cake. Yes, you want the bigger piece. Yeah, you always want the bigger piece. Now we've got one third and point three repeating. So we've got to change them into the same form because we've got a fraction and a decimal. Now some of you guys are looking and saying, oh, I know what that is in fraction form. Keep that to yourself. Let's look at this one. How do I convert this to a decimal? If you don't know what's going on here because there's something magical happening here, how do I convert that to a decimal? Easiest way to convert, you're dividing because we've got one third and we put top dog in the house, the one divided by three, put my decimal and add a few zeros. Make sure you bring your decimal up. So then put that decimal up. So does three go into one? No, I got to keep going. That's a zero. Three into ten was three. Bring down the nine. I mean, this kind of looks like it's just going to repeat oh, here. Oh, yeah, that's a pattern. Oh, look at that. So those of you guys that already knew the answer, you already knew. But those of you guys who didn't, now you know. One third is equivalent to point three 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 three. So that would be equal to. Yeah, I can still compare equal values. Would you have known looking straight at it? Maybe if you were me and Miss Green or you're super duper smart like some of you, you would have known looking at it, oh, hey, that's the same thing. But if you had to do the division, that's great. What's that? That's a decimal point. One over 3.3333? No, I just wrote it in. Oh. <laughs> I wrote it next to it. That's my, that's my decimal form. Oh, I was confused. <laughs> I'm glad that you told me that. Okay. Sorry. Now we've got negative 5 ninths compared to negative 5.3. Oh, oh, this one's tough. It had, they both have negatives. One's a fraction, one's a decimal. I'm not real sure if I'm going to be able to compare these. I see it one way I could compare them without putting into a decimal. Oh, tell me about it. Is that whole? Oh, it's less than one. So it's less than one. And I know this is greater than one. And they're in the negative signs. If I look at my negative signs here and I start at zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and negative five, I know that this negative 5.3 is over here. This one's somewhere between one and zero. 
And if you go further to the left, it is less than those to the right. So that means that my five value is going to be less than my my negative five over nine. Awesome. If I didn't look at it and know that instantly, could I have changed that to a decimal? Absolutely. So either way would have worked. Awesome. Very cool. Now let's order some numbers. Let's put these in order. From Let's go greatest to least. I should have written that in. I'm sorry. Greatest to least. We've got pi, 3 fourths, negative 2, square root of 5, and negative 3.5. Oh my gosh, all cool. different kinds of numbers, rational and irrational. Okay, what did we say step one was to do? We need to convert them all into decimals. Okay, so pi, what's the decimal for pi? 3.14. Awesome, if I didn't know that, I need to memorize that. 3 fourths of a decimal. 0.75. That one's one you should also know as well. There's some simple ones that are just benchmark fractions and decimals. 3 fourths to 0.75. Memorize it. You're going to need to know that. Negative 2? How do I change that to a decimal? Uh, I think it just stays as negative 2. Oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> negative 2. Okay, square root of 5. Use uh, your calculator. Yeah, here we go. Square root of 5, that is 2.236. 2.236. And then we've got negative 3.5, which is already in decimal form. Let's separate our, as the next step said, separate our positives from our negatives. So we had negative 2 negative 3.5, then we've got the others that are 3.14, 0 0.75, 2.236, 2 what was the least, or the, I'm sorry, I should have done this opposite. What's the greatest? The greatest is going to be our two, the one with the whole number. Oh, wait, Are you no, sure? Because I think pi is bigger. I missed it. Yep, pi so, is bigger. Pi is my biggest, so I'm going to start there because I'm doing greatest to least. Now... What next, comes next? 2.236. Which was my square root of 5. Then? Mm, we're done with that one. Then our comes our 3 fourths. So 3 fourths. So I need to write that in its original form. We're done with that one. Now, is negative 2 or negative 3.5 greater? I don't know. Bring back the number line real quick. Okay, the number line was right there. we got to remember, we've got negative 2 and negative 3.5. So I think that negative 2 is Bigger. Right, so anything to the left is going to be less. That's a little key that I use to help remember. Anything to the left is going to be less. Uh, yes, it was negative 3.5. Yep. So you got to make sure that when you're looking at it, if you have to draw a number line, please do. That's yep. perfectly fine. It always helps. So these are my numbers from greatest to least. Okay, and I think we have, we have one, more. one more. This time we're going to do least to greatest. Always pay attention because you never know which way it's going to be going. Also, some of the words that are used are ascending and descending. So yes. if you don't know what those words mean, ascending means... Going up. Going up and then descending, duh, duh, down. Going down. Okay. So now let's start by converting all of these to decimals. Square root of 7, again, just use your calculator Should on we that. give them a few seconds to try on their own? We can give them a few seconds to try on their own. Okay, you have a few seconds. Pause. And we're back. <laughs> so what is the decimal for square root of 7? Oh, let me put that into my calculator. Square root of 7 is 2.645. 2.645. The decimal for negative 5.6 is negative 5.6. The decimal for negative 3 fifths? It is a negative 0. 0.6. Negative 0. 0.6. I'm going to add a little zero there. One ninth? One ninth. I don't know that one by memory. That is 0.1111111. Point one repeating. There you go. And zero. Very good. So now we're going to separate our positives from our negatives. So we had negative 5.6 is there. Negative 0. 0.6 is there. I had no other negatives. So now I've got 2.645. Point one repeating and zero. Are we done? Not quite, because we're doing least to greatest. That's right. So we have one more step after that. What step is that going to be? Order them using their original form. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. So with our negatives, which one's greater and which one's least? The bigger the digit, the, the smaller it is. is. Yes, so that would be my least, negative 5.6. Then we only have one other negative, so it'll be z negative... Three-fifths. Point, oh, I'm sorry. Negative three-fifths in my original form. And it's okay. Had she written had she written that, that would have been okay. Because if this was like a multiple choice thing, you would know that that is going to be your negative three-fifths. So either way, she's yes. good. You're good. 
Now, what would be the next? Uh, I think zero. Zero would come next. Because zero is neither negative nor positive. Yep. And then we've got, I would say, 0.1 repeating, yes. which was 1 ninth. And then the square root of 7, because the 2 mm -hmm. comes before my comes. other. Oh, that was the last one. That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that was just the last one. Cross those out now. So that's how you order real numbers. As we said, the most important thing, put them all in the same form. Because if you don't have them in the same form, you can't tell what it is. Yeah, it's harder to compare. So let us know if you have questions. Come see us. Oh, and, whoops. Oh. <laughs> I'm not good at the zooming in part. Come see us if you have questions. Google it. We will there see you all soon. Is.